Okay, so we are um, continuing our, the second video is the second half of page two, and then it'll be page three of notes five, four. Again, we're doing, um, we're solving right triangles and using applications, and we're going to do word problems next. So that's kind of what we're getting up to right now is word problems. And so when we do word problems involving right triangles, we have something called an angle of elevation. And that just means uh, you're sort of on the ground and you're looking up. So you're on the ground looking up, so you're going to elevate. So we look at that as our angle of elevation. Uh, you could be, instead of being the person down here looking up at the top of the building, you could be at the top of the building and looking at something down here. And so that will be called an angle of depression because you're looking down um, so that would be the angle of depression. That would be the angle of elevation. Notice that this is going to be parallel with this. And so that means we have alternate interior angles. And so, yes, both of those would be theta. So the angle of elevation and angle of depression are going to be the same thing. Uh, just be careful. It's not, when we say angle of depression, we don't mean this angle in here. It's the angle that starting at the horizon and then looking down at the thing that you're scoping out down on the ground. Or here, uh, you're down on the, on the ground, looking horizontally, and then you scope something up above. And so that's the angle of elevation or angle of depression. But again, um, it's all sort of semantics. Are you down below? Are you up above? Right. That's going to determine what kind of angle we have. All right, let's look at example four. Um, how tall is a flagpole if the angle of elevation uh, 25.5 feet away from its base on the level ground? So we're talking about like pretending the ground is flat. And um, that angle of elevation is 37.2 degrees. <clears throat> All right. Um, so a picture, you know, and a good picture is, is worth a lot here. So we have a flagpole. Here's the flag. The ground is flat. Our angle of elevation. So um, we're going to, unless they give us details about how tall the person is or, you know, how, how that the instrument they're measuring the angle with is, is five feet off the ground, we're just going to assume that we're like a little ant. So like the person is infinitesimally short. And so we want to look at, we're measuring it from the ground. Of course, I sort of met, I missed my... Um, my point there, so here you are on the ground and you're measuring your angle of elevation. So this is 37.2 degrees. And the base, that's this length here, that was given to us as 25.5 degrees. Flagpole, of course, is perpendicular to the ground. The ground is flat. So what we want to know is how tall is the flagpole. That would be this length out here. All right, and so you're going to use some kind of sine or cosine or tangent, depending on the relationship between the three things that we know, that we either know or are looking for. So we have an angle of elevation, we have the base, and we have the height. How are these three things related? Would we use sine, would we use cosine, or would we use tangent? And I think here you could see that we would use the tangent. So the tangent of that angle of elevation, 37.2 degrees, is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, 25.5. And so we just use a little algebra. We multiply both sides by 25.5. So x is equal to 25.5 uh, tangent of 37.2. All right, and then that gives us something like the flagpole's height is 19.4. Uh, the units here, I believe, are feet. Yeah, feet. Okay, next one. A cell tower. Uh, a cell tower is 205.25 feet tall. A support cable attached to the top creates an angled depression of 43.2 degrees. How long is that support cable? So again, draw a picture. We have this, um, this tower. We're going to think of 
the tower is being infinitesimally thin, just like we kind of thought the flagpole, we think of it as infinitesimally thin. So that's our tower. Here is the ground. We have some kind of support wire attached to the ground, and we're assuming it's attached to the top. The angle of elevation this time is this, and that is given to us as 43 degrees 20 minutes. Uh, we know, let's see, what do we know? We know the cell tower height is 205.25. 0.25 feet, okay, um, being a little sloppy there, um, and so we want to know this length of the support wire X. So now again, we want to think about what relationship these known sides and angles have. Also remember that that angle is the same as this angle, right, the angle of elevation, the angle of depression. It doesn't matter if you're down at the bottom of the uh, cable or at the top, those should be the same um, because we measure the angle of depression out from the horizon as we do on the ground. Those are parallel. So think about what uh, relationship has between this angle and these sides. So I think you see that's the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the sine of 43 degrees 20 minutes um, is equal to the opposite, 205.25 divided by x. We do a little bit of manipulation there. We know x is equal to 205.25 uh, feet over the sine of 43 degrees 21 minutes. And so x here is equal to, and in this case, uh, we probably should round, I don't know, the, the angle is only three significant figures. So I'm just going to say round it to the nearest whole foot, and that would be 299 feet. Okay. All right. Uh, example six. Uh, two office buildings are 51.2 meters apart. The height of the taller building is 200 and 7.3 meters. The angle of depression from the top edge of the taller building to the top edge of the shorter building is 15.25 feet. Um, uh, no, sorry, <laughs> that's an angle, sorry. The angle of depression is 50 degrees, um, 25 inches, uh, 25 minutes. Uh, find the height of the shorter building. Okay, so the, the key to this problem is drawing an accurate picture. If you can't draw an accurate picture, you're probably not going to get this right. So let's start with uh, the ground, as flat as possible. And we have two buildings. So we have, um, give ourselves plenty of room, so we have the taller building. And we have the shorter building. Now, I'm not going to be drawing this probably perfectly to scale. Uh, the angle of depression. So you're up at the top of the building. The, the top of the uh, higher building, and we want to look at this angle of elevation here. All right, so that um, that angle is 15 degrees 25 minutes. All right, uh, we know the distance between the buildings. The buildings are. 51.2 meters apart. Uh, we also know the height of the taller building. So we know this is uh, 207.3 meters. And so we just got to kind of figure out the rest of this picture. So if we continue this and we draw a right triangle here, what we need to do is find the height of the shorter building. Well, we know the height of the taller building. If we knew the difference in the heights, then we can subtract uh, this difference from the um, tall building's height and find the height of the shorter building. So first we want to find X, but then we'll find Y, which is ultimately answering the question that they're asking. All right, so think about the relationship 
um, you know, we know this piece up here, it's the same as this piece down here. So what's the relationship between this angle and those two sides? Well, I think it's tangent, right? So the tangent of 15 degrees, 25 minutes, that's equal to the opposite, which would be X over the adjacent, which is the 51.2 meters. And then we just multiply both sides by, um, by 51.2. So X is equal to 51.2 times the tangent of 15 degrees, 25 minutes. Um, and X is equal to 14.1. Just going to go ahead and just put that as three significant digits. And then uh, we want to subtract that from the taller building. Um, actually, should I use three significant figures? Um, well, yeah, I mean, this one was given to us as three significant figures. So really, I guess, you know, round to the nearest tenth in that case. All right, and so then what we want to do is so you say X, um, well, Y, what I'm calling Y here, the height of the building then is the 207.3 meters minus the 14.1 meters. And so the height of the shorter building should be something like 193 meters. Staying with our three significant figures, uh, if you want it to round uh, to the nearest, uh, so to like to the nearest tenth of a meter. That's something that we often do as well. Um, that would be something like um, 193.2 meters. So, you know, either one of those answers would probably be okay. Uh, what depends on what we ask you to round to. All right, a couple more um, examples of word problems using these right triangles um, on page three. So let's go to that then. Um, page three, same um, notes, five, four, page three. So number seven, from the top of a cliff that's 242 uh, feet above the sea, George observes a buoy in the water that is 506, uh, 532 feet out from the base of the cliff. Find the angle depression from the top of the cliff to the buoy. So pause this video and draw a picture and then see how your picture looks compared to, um, to mine. All right, so cliff, we have something up here. Um, and then, you know, it's flat, but we're gonna think about that being the ocean. You know, think of it as kind of a line, but if you want to sort of draw a little wave, a little bit wavy. And then here, out here is the buoy that we're looking at. All right, the cliff. This is 242 um, feet above. And then we want to think about what is that angle of elevation. We want to find that angle. Let's call it theta. All right, we know that this distance here is 532 you know, feet, and then this is also feet here, okay? So we want to think about the angle. So that angle of elevation, remember, it's the same as that angle. So we can call that one theta 2 if you want. And this one's a little bit easier. Of course, here's our right angle. This one's a little bit easier to visualize. Um, then, you know, with our right triangle, then our angle of elevation up there, we transform it back down here to the angle of depression, uh, angle of elevation rather than the angle of depression. Um, and then what ratio would we use in this case? I think you would see that um, that would be the tangent, right? It's the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the tangent of theta is equal to 242 over... 532, uh, but we don't want to know the tangent of theta. We want to know theta. So theta is going to be the inverse tangent of, two, of 242 over 532. And on that, you know, that's the inverse tangent that you're going to do in your calculator. We learned that last, um, last, um, last section. 
And so that's going to be something like uh, 24.5 degrees. Um, that would be perfectly acceptable if you wanted to put it into um, degrees minutes, um, 24 degrees and half of a degree is 30 minutes. So either one of those would be an acceptable answer. It doesn't say how to put your answer. Um, it didn't give us any other angles to indicate what format that angle should be in. Okay. Next one, um, number eight. So on number eight, uh, we're going to have a system of equations. Now, some of you may, from, out, from geometry last year, know law of sines and law of cosines. And those are shortcuts that you can use to solve these, but we're not going to allow you to do that yet. We want to, um, we're going to assume everybody's on the same playing field. Uh, nobody knows law of sines and law of co cosines. So even though you probably do, some of you, uh, we're going to pretend that, that for the next two problems, number eight and number nine, that you don't, do not know and you do not use law of sines and law of cosines for these problems. Okay, so here we have, um, you know, there's no context for this, but you might be looking at the height of a building and you might be out here somewhere and you might, well, this is centimeters, so it's probably not the height of a building. But so you're looking at this height and you're here and you have your angle of elevation of 32 degrees, um, 32.5 degrees. And then you move in 21.5 centimeters and then you measure your angle of elevation to that same point. And this time it got bigger because it makes sense. You're getting closer to it. So your angle of elevation, you're going to have to raise up from the horizon um, at, a high, at a steeper angle in order to get to that same point, and it's 42.5. So what we want to do is find x. Now, you have to create some extra um, variables here. So let's call this y. And so that is from this point to this point, right? That is y. And then, you know, the uh, 21.5 centimeters is just the length between these two points. Okay, and what we want to do now is create some systems of equations using our two right triangles. So we have this, this sort of smaller area right triangle here and then the big right triangle out here. So right, pause the video and right trigonometric ratio equations relating the stuff in this triangle and the stuff in the big right triangle. And then um, unpause the video when you're done. All right, so for this first triangle, we're going to get something like the tangent of 42.5 degrees equals x over y, opposite over hypotenuse, I'm sorry, opposite over adjacent. And then the other one would be using this one. And so that is the tangent of 32.5 degrees is equal to x, the opposite, over the adjacent. This time the adjacent is the whole thing. So we'll say y plus 21.5. So we have, two, we have a, uh, two systems of equations, and we want to solve them simultaneously. Ultimately, we're looking for x. So it probably makes sense to try to um, simplify out the y, but ultimately, probably it's just easier. X is kind of by itself. It's easier to just solve both of these for x. So um, we know x is equal to y, the tangent of 42.5 degrees. And here uh, we'll multiply this tangent by y plus 21.5 um, and distribute that as well. And so we'll get x is equal to y tangent of 32.5 and then plus 21.5, running out of room here, tangent of 32.5. Sorry, I'm like running out of space there. Okay. And so now what we want to do is set these, they're both equal to x, set these expressions equal to each other. So we get, I'm going to start over here and write a little smaller this time. So tangent, a y tangent of 42.5 degrees equals y tangent 
of 32.5 plus 21.5 tangent of 32.5. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the things that have y's. We want to solve this for y. So take these things that have y's, move them to the other side, uh, leave this by itself. While I'm doing that, I'm going to take these over and I'm going to factor a y out to save myself a step. So y is equal to the tangent of 42.5. This comes over, it's negative. The y came out tangent of 32.5, and that's equal to 21.5 tangent of 32.5, okay? And now we want to get y by itself. We just divide by the parentheses. And I haven't touched my calculator yet. Um, sometimes students want to like just take these values and plug them into the calculator kind of up here at the beginning and, and deal with a bunch of numbers. Uh, but it's so easy to transpose some of those numbers. I would wait till the very end. I would wait till after I finish writing this step. 21.5 tangent of 32.5 over tangent of 42.5 minus the tangent of 32.5. So I would pick up my calculator at this point, remembering that it's best to go ahead and put parentheses around everything that's upstairs and everything that's downstairs so you don't get into trouble with order of operations. Um, so that ends up being 49.0 uh, centimeters. And now, okay, so we weren't really looking for y, but it was just easier to solve for y. And now we can just simply plug that back into this equation up here. So, um, or actually, we're looking for x. This equation is really the better one to do. So x is equal to the tangent, uh, the, the y, which is 49.0 tangent of 42.5 degrees. And so that's just calculator work. That's 44.9 centimeters is sort of the... I don't know, the height of this building or whatever. I mean, it's not a building. It's 44 centimeters. It's, um, it's you know, half a meter. Um, but that height there is 44.9 centimeters. Okay, let's look at this last problem then. Number nine, Mercedes and Jorge are each on opposite sides of a cell tower. They are 305 yards apart. If Mercedes has an angle of elevation of 20, point, uh, 20 degrees um, 12 minutes to the top of the cell tower, and Jorge has an angle uh, of elevation of 30 degrees 46 minutes, then how tall is the tower? So let's draw a picture for this. And again, it may not be exactly to scale, but there's the tower. Now, you might think, who's closer? Is Mercedes closer or is Jorge closer to the tower? Based on the angle of elevation, we can decide who is closer. So Mercedes has a smaller angle of elevation. So that means she's further away. Wouldn't be bad to sort of draw that a little bit to scale anyway. All right. Um, so... Let's call this point T for like the top of the tower. We'll call this M for Mercedes. And we'll call this point J for Jorge. And, you know, again, I'm not drawing my angles perfectly to scale here, but you can see Jorge's angle of elevation is certainly uh, bigger than Mercedes, both of which are not probably drawn to scale. Both of them are actually too big, I think. I should have made the tower a little shorter and it would have been more to scale. But ultimately, that is... 30 degrees 46 minutes and that is 20 degrees 12 minutes okay and we ultimately want to find x now we do know one more piece of information that we don't have on this drawing we know the total distance between them is 305 so how can we label these things down here with as few variables as possible. So I could call this, that's x, the height. So I could call this y and this z, but that introduces too many variables. So I call this y 
based on the whole length is 305, I could call this 305 minus y. And so we want to set up, again, the cell tower, of course, is um, perpendicular to the ground. So we want to set up um, an equation for this triangle and for this triangle, and we will then solve those simultaneously. So um, <clears throat> let's call this, um, let's, again, the same thing uh, that we did up above. This is going to be tangent. The tangent of, I'm going to start with Jorge, the tangent of 30 degrees, 46 minutes is equal to x over 305 minus y. And um, uh is the tangent of 20 degrees, 12 minutes is equal to her opposite is x and her adjacent is y. All right, so we're going to do the same thing again. We really want to find x, so it'd be better if we could eliminate the y, but it's just easier to solve both of these for x. So we get x is equal to, and let's distribute, we get 305 tangent of 30 degrees, 46 minutes, uh, minus y tangent 30 degrees, 46 minutes. Uh, this equation, we get x equals y tangent of 20, 20 degrees, 12 minutes. And so both of these equations are solved for x. We set them equal to each other because they're both equal to x. So we get <clears throat> 305 tangent. It's a little bit tedious rewriting all of this, but um, I'm just going to try not to skip any steps here. Um, and then, you know what? Let's go ahead and move this y to the other side. I'm going to set these equal to each other. Move that y to the other side. So we get y tangent 30 degrees 46 minutes plus y tangent of 20 degrees 12 minutes. We have the terms with y's on the right. Factor that out. And then we would divide by this. So hopefully you can kind of see we get y is equal to, we're going to get this divided by what the parentheses would be if we factored the y out of this side. So I'm going to skip a little step there. So 305 tangent of 30 degrees, 46 minutes over tangent 30 degrees, 46 minutes plus tangent of 20 degrees, 12 minutes. All right, so put all that into your calculator. Um, and what do we get for y? Uh, plugging all that in, we get 189 yards. Again, I'm going to just use three. Um, you, know, I, um, you know, the length here was three. Um, three significant figures, so your science teacher would want you to just do 189. Leave a couple decimal places, that's fine, um, no big deal. And then, um, so finally we want to now solve for x, because ultimately that's what we want to know, is how tall is the tower. And so we can plug it into this equation and get that pretty quickly. So x, the height of the cell tower, is equal to y, which is 189, tangent of 20 degrees, 12 minutes. And again, plugging that into your calculator. Careful, you're going to have to convert to degrees there. Um, but that gives us something like 69.5 yards. Okay. Um, and again, I went, to, I guess, kept it at three significant figures there. Okay, so your homework um, for this, this section um, is here, and that is due next class.